Hello and welcome to Workshop 2, Excel 2010, brought to you by ShipKey Solutions. I am Eric Ripley. In today's video tutorial, we'll be covering items, generally speaking, such as adding data to a worksheet, formatting cells, creating formulas and functions, and creating and formatting a 3D pie chart. Today, I'll be following along each of the steps in the instruction sheet that came along with workshop two. Let's take a look at what those are. Step one of our worksheet is to download and open workshop two, Excel 2010. Once we've completed doing that, we're gonna go to step two. Step two is to apply a newsprint theme, or more or less change the theme this Excel sheet. In order to do that, we're going to come up to our home tab, or our tabs I should say, come over to our page layout tab, and over in our themes group, we're going to find our themes button. We're going to click this drop down here and take a look at what we have available to us. By the way, if you want to verify or just double check as to what theme is currently applied, you simply cursor over the button and it tells you right there, it says themes current office theme. And that's what's currently applied. Well, we're going to click this drop down and we're going to go look for the um, newsprint. These are all alphabetically ordered so if we come down there, here it is, newsprint. We're going to click this and it changes and applies that theme. Step three of our worksheet is to go to cell B2 and type in the word July and then use our autofill to fill over to G2. Okay, let's take a look at that. We're gonna go here to cell B2. We're gonna type in the word July. And then I'm gonna put my cursor down here in the bottom right corner to my fill handle. And I'm gonna click and drag all the way over to G2. And it fills in the dates automatically for me. Step four of our worksheet is to come over to cell I3 and create a formula in here that will uh, give us the percent of total debt. And that, per that, in order to come up with that formula, we have to um, start our formula with the equal sign. And what we're going to do is again, we're going to say H3 divided by H8. Now, one trick to this that we have to be uh, careful of doing is if we don't make H8 an absolute cell reference right here, as we fill this down, the other formulas down here, the results will be um, uh, obscure and they we won't get the results we need. So what we need to do is make sure that H8 is an absolute cell reference. In order to do that, with our insertion point after our cell reference here of H8, we're going to press F4 and then it absolute references that cell. When I'm finished with this formula, I'm gonna come up and click my enter button here. It's a little check mark. I'm gonna click enter. When I do, my cell remains uh, active here. Then I'm gonna click my fill handle here, fill down to uh, I7. I'm gonna get my percentages in there. And now once I... Step five tells us to select this range of I3 through I7 here and change this to a percentage and then also center the, uh, the entries. So in order to do that we're going to come up to our home tab. We're going to come over to our number group and here's our percent sign right there. It says percent style. I'm going to click this. It changes it to percent style. We're also going to part of the uh, step. We're going to uh, increase the um, decimal place by one gives us a little more specific number here. And then when we're done, we're going to center this. Step six of our worksheet is to select the ranges B3 through H3 and B8 through H8 and apply an accounting format with zero decimal places. Well, we're going to select this range now. If I click to drag to select this range, I want to select what's called a non-adjacent selection. 
in order to do this, I have to press my control key, click and drag my second range. And now I have them both selected at the same time. Now from here, I'm going to come up to my number group and click my dollar sign. And when I do, it'll automatically apply the accounting format. I can see that there's some uh, pound signs throughout some of these cells here, through most of them. What that means is that it simply means that there is more information to be seen, but the column isn't wide enough to show it. So before I continue, I want to remove all these decimal places, which by two, so I'm going to click it twice. And there they are. It appears all my information. And the accounting format uh, gives us our dollar sign on the, it's called a hard left. On the far left here is our dollar sign. Currency, on the other hand, is a dollar sign that hugs the number, or what's called a floating dollar sign. Okay, those are the differences. Step seven tells us to uh, format the range B4 through H7 with the comma zero cell style, and also apply the total cell style to the range B8 through H8. So I'm going to select this range first, B4 through H7. I'm going to come up to my styles group here, click my drop down, and in my drop down I can see that down here are some number formatting. Here's my comma zero. I'm going to click this and it gives me my comma style and it omits any decimal places for me automatically. I'm going to select my next range, B8 through H8, and apply a total style. I'm going to click my drop down here, and here is my total style here. It gives me a top and double bottom border. Okay, and click and deselect that. I can see my changes. Step 8 of our worksheet is to create a pie and 3D chart using the range uh, A3 through A7 and H3 through H7, and then positioning the chart uh, so that it's in the range of A3 through I38. Okay, so once I have this selected here, I'm going to go up to my Insert tab. I'm going to come over to my Chart group and click Pi. And down here is our Pi in 3D chart. I'll click this, and my chart appears. I'm going to click and drag and drop this over here so the top left corner is in A11. And then I'm going to scroll down and reposition this uh, bottom right corner so that it's in the column I down to I38 right there. Boom. There's our chart. Step 9 talks about changing the chart title and uh, some step, step 10 and step 11 talks about uh, data labels and legends uh, modifications. So if we look at this, we can see we clearly don't have a chart title, nor do we have data labels. We do have our legend over here, though. Well, in order to apply those kind of quickly using some simple layouts is to come up to our chart layouts. And if we look at this preview here, we can see that we have our data labels in the little preview. And we have our legend and a title up here. So if we click this, we can see we're going to get our title and our data labels all there for us. Okay, so let's change our uh, chart title. Once we add our chart title, step 9 also goes on to say to change the uh, chart title to font size 20. So what I do is I click the border here of this and I get my solid line around my text box here. I'm going to come up and change this to font size 20. They're all selected. If I click any one of these again, I'll have just that one selected. I don't want to have just one selected, so I want them all selected. So I'm going to click it once. They're all selected. I'm going to change this font size to size 14. And that's the step 11 tells us to change the font size of our legend here to font size 12. So I'm going to select it. I just click it one time. I'm going to come up and change the font size to 12. Step 12 tells us to move the uh, legend to the bottom of our chart. That would go right down here. So in order to move our, our legend to the bottom of our chart, we're going to come up to our Layout tab. 
come over to our labels group and click legend and then we have many choices to choose from here but we're going to come down to choose show legend at bottom there it is background uh, the chart area background to a solid color using uh, blue gray accent 5 lighter 60 percent so in order to do that I'm going to come over and make sure that I have uh, in my current selection group I have charts area selected or it's showing there which means I basically just have my chart selected when I have that done I'm gonna click format selection I'm gonna get my dialog box up here and from my dialog box I'm gonna choose in the fill I'm gonna choose fill color click my drop down here and I'm looking for blue gray accent 5 lighter 60 there it is click that and there's the background step 14 tells us to format the data series using the format data series dialog box to uh, format the top bevel of our uh, pie chart with a divot uh, with a height of 50 points and also formatting the material settings so that it has a soft edge all right, so in order to do that, again, I'll notice that this uh, chart area is selected, and that can be verified right up here. It says chart area. In order to format the, uh, the data series, I'm going to click here on my pie chart itself, and I'll see it says series 1. From here, I'm going to click format selection. I'm going to get my format selection dialog box up here. And in here, I'm going to come down to 3D format. Here's my 3D format bevel area, and here's the top. I'm going to click down here, and I'm going to look for the um, divot. There's divot. So now that I've found divot, I'm going to click on divot. I'm going to change the um, height to 50 points. So here's my height. Change this to, I can either click the up arrow or just simply type it in, 50, and press tab. It'll apply that 50 points. And before I'm finished here, I'm going to come down to the surface and change my material surface. Click this drop down and look for special effects soft edge. So if I click this, it'll apply that, and then I'm all done. Click close. Step 15 tells us to insert seven blank rows at the top of our worksheet. Well, in order to do that, I'm going to scroll up here to the very top click here in A1 and I want to insert seven rows all at one time so I'm gonna click and drag to select rows one two three four five seven one through seven once I have those rows selected by clicking the row headers I'm gonna right click on any one of these and choose insert when I do there it is there are my seven inserted uh, rows all at once Step 16 is to insert a word art using style gradient fill blue gray accent for reflections. Well, in order to do that, in order to insert a word art, I'm going to go to the, my insert tab and then I'm going to go over to my text group right over here. And then in my text group, I'm going to click my word art and then I'm going to come down and the way I tell which one I need to go to and look for the reflection that might be blue and there it is. I'll click this and there's my word art. Step 17 tells us to change our text here by typing in city debt and then moving our text to the center at the top of our worksheet here centering it in the seven rows here so I'm going to center it right about there the last three steps of this particular worksheet uh, got a little bit jumbled um, but the natural step after this would be to insert the file name and current date in the bottom of our uh, worksheet footer. So in order to do that we're going to go to the insert tab and then over in our text group we're going to click header footer 
and then we're going to click under the navigation go click on go to footer and that takes us right to our footer here from here we're going to click in the far left side and click in file name and then click on the right hand side and choose current date not current time current date when I'm all done with that I'm going to click uh, in one of the cells above here and then be, be sure to change my view to normal view and then once I'm in normal view I'm going to scroll back to the very top of my worksheet and then I'm going to save my workbook I'm going to save it with the uh, file name as it is and I'm simply going to add my first and last name to the end of the uh, file name. Once it's saved I'm going to upload it to my uh, Dropbox folder that is uh, has the uh, folder called completed um, workshop 2 in this case. Thanks for listening and uh, stay tuned for the next workshop, workshop number 3.